and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our outside in stitched strawberry. We're also going to be introducing our stitched strawberry frame and our reveal wheel strawberry add-on. So let's go ahead and check all of these out. First we're going to check out the outside in strawberry and the strawberry frame. These are great because they work well on their own and they work well together, especially for creating shaker cards. So first up we're going to take a look at the outside in stitched strawberry. This die comes with a strawberry shape that creates a stitched strawberry and also a stitched strawberry shaped window, which is really cool for creating shakers or kind of cool double stitched elements on your card. There's also a cute little smiley face and some rosy cheeks, the little strawberry cap leaves for the top, some strawberry seeds, which you can either die cut from the strawberry or use separately as little shaker bits. We have the little stem and then these adorable flowers that you can layer for really, really cute looks. And here's what it looks like to layer these pieces. So there you can see how cute it looks with the stem and the leaves at the top of the strawberry and how you can layer the flower in different ways. You can layer them over each other like this or you can add that cute little kind of star shaped piece to the center. There's also a smiley face you can either add or die cut from the strawberry. You can of course add the little leaves to the strawberry shaped opening as well. And that's a really fun way to create a shaker with all those cute little seed pieces on the inside. So now we're gonna take a look at the stitched strawberry frame. And this die creates a strawberry frame and a little strawberry on the inside that you can see there. It has those cute little leaves that are in a little bit of a different style. We have a stem, some larger seeds, some really cute little leaves and greenery, and some more flowers that are super fun to layer. We're gonna take a look at all of these pieces and how they layer together. So there you can see you can add the little leaves to the top of the frame. And on the inside of the frame, you have an even smaller shaped strawberry piece. You can also add that cute little greenery around the strawberry and use those larger seeds either on the strawberry or as shaker bits too. And then you can layer these cute little flowers in a similar way as the other ones with the little stars and the tiny little piece on the inside. And here is a look at what this strawberry looks like with all of those little pieces layered. It is so cute and sweet. Now, one of the best things about this die is that they work together. So here we're gonna take the outside in strawberry, which gives you a larger strawberry shape. So it's kind of nice to have a larger one and then more of like a medium sized one. And then you can take that frame and layer it right on top of the outside in strawberry. And that's gonna help you create a shaker. And we're gonna be showing you how to do that in just a little bit. You can also layer either style of greenery, either the larger greenery or the smaller greenery, depending on how you want to mix and match for different looks for your strawberries. I just love the look of the frame layered over top of the strawberry and then those little seeds on the inside as little shaker pieces. It is absolutely adorable. Next for this strawberry theme video, we have our Reveal Wheel Strawberry add-on and its coordinating templates. This allows you to add a cute strawberry detail to your Reveal Wheel cards. And there are lots of styles of different Reveal Wheel windows. We have butterflies and Easter eggs and all these cute things. And now we have this adorable strawberry. And we'll be making a Reveal Wheel card at the end of this video. So in the die, you have the Reveal Wheel window, you have the little strawberry frame, and then also that cute little strawberry cap with the little leaves on it. So you can draw Pop that window right into your reveal wheel die and run it through your die cut machine and now you're going to have a reveal wheel window in a cute strawberry shape. And if you've never made a reveal wheel before, make sure to check out our intro to reveal wheel video. We'll link it in the description below. And here's what the Reveal Wheel Strawberry looks like when you use the little frame with the cute leaves. And you can also use it without the frame because it has that really pretty stitch detail just like that. Now these are the templates and they have either four windows or three windows and these help making stamping in your strawberry shaped opening so much easier. You don't need any pencil lines or anything. And if you've never used these templates before, definitely make sure to check out our intro to the Reveal Wheel templates video. I'll link that in the description as well too. This video has three interactive cards and we're starting off with a shaker card, then Shari is making an easel card, and then I'll be back to make a reveal wheel card. So there is a lot in this video and I can't wait for you guys to see these really fun cards. So right here, we're gonna be creating a shaker. So we have the outside in stitched strawberry and the stitched strawberry frame. I'm also gonna bring in some of the smaller strawberries from Strawberry Patch. And that's one of the things I love about all these dies is they all look really cute together. 
I'm also going to be bringing in the word scripty sweet too and we're going to do a little bit of inking. This is some lobster ink which is this nice bright red and we're just going to ink a little bit of this raspberry cardstock just to give it just a little bit of definition. This is really quick and easy to do and it just makes your die cuts look so special. So we're going to do that towards the bottom of the strawberry frame, the strawberry and the tiny strawberries and then we're also going to do it at the bottom of that scripty sweet and we die cut that from some textured cardstock in a really nice bright pink and you'll see that we're using that same red color at the bottom and it looks so cool almost like you had inked the whole thing but you just have to ink just a little bit at the bottom. Next I went ahead and die cut the word sweet again out of some raspberry cardstock and we're going to be layering these two together to have a cool little shadow effect. So I'm going to use the glue tube on the back and then layer it over top just offsetting it just a little bit to the right and you'll see how it makes that whole die just pop. Then for the seeds on the back, we're going to be using some black cardstock. So the strawberry patch die comes with strawberries that have the seeds cut out and then just kind of basic base strawberries. We're just going to layer that behind and you'll see it's going to fill in all of those cute little seeds onto our strawberries. Now next up we're going to be taking out a ton of greenery. So we're going to be taking out the tops of these that come in the strawberry patch die and then we're going to be taking out greenery from strawberry patch, the outside in stitch strawberry, and the stitch strawberry frame. So we're combining all the strawberry stuff together and that's what I love about it is you can really mix and match this. Now here we have some cilantro cardstock and I'm taking some of the new clover ink and inking it onto the cilantro cardstock and oh my gosh these two together make the most perfect combo. This is kind of like quick and easy ink blending. It's kind of my favorite way to do things now. Instead of starting with white cardstock I start with a different colored base and then just add a little bit to the edges and look how gorgeous that is. Oh I love it. So I'm just using a tiny little bender brush here just to kind of get onto just little bits of the leaves or little bits to the tops of the leaves just to give give it that really cool look. And you'll see I'm just kind of blending in the ink. The nice thing about inking on like with the clover ink onto the cilantro or the lobster onto the raspberry is there's no right or wrong. You can just kind of bring the ink on and it's going to look good no matter what. So I just love that. And look you can see those die cuts have just come to life. Now that we've added a little bit of that clover ink to all of our cilantro greenery pieces we can start to build. So first up I'm just going to finish building my little tiny strawberry patch strawberries. So we'll add the little strawberry caps up on the top. I keep calling them caps. I don't know if they're leaves or caps or what the official name is but I know they're absolutely adorable. <laughs> so now that we've got those little strawberries done we can set those aside and start to work on the shaker. And the way we're going to create the shaker today is by die cutting a bunch of these strawberry frames. So I die cut seven of these frames and we're going to stack those on top of each other to create the height for the shaker. Another way to do this is that you can actually die cut that fun foam stuff that's like in the kids section of the craft store and that could give you some height or you could add a ton of little tiny foam squares or foam tape. So there's a lot of fun ways to do this but this one happens to be my favorite because I like that it looks really nice on the outside edges because it's all that same beautiful raspberry pink color. So I'm taking my glue tube, adding some liquid glue, and then just layering each next piece. And I'm stacking them on top of each other. And that's going to create the shaker. And here you can see after we add our last little frame on there, the depth and the height that we've created almost like a little well. And that's going to give a place for all of the shaker bits to move around. Now we had talked about how you can put the seeds on the inside to create shaker pieces and that's really fun too. But I'm recreating a card by Grace today and she did something really cool with the little seed pieces on the outside of the shaker and I wanted to show you a cool tip to do that. So we're going to add some cute little kind of sequin glitter pieces to the inside of this. And then we're going to die cut with the outside and stitch strawberry some acetate. And so that's the frame and that's the outside and strawberry. So that was the base part of our shaker and now it's going to be the top creating the little window. So we're going to layer on that piece of acetate and that's going to kind of trap all of those little sequin pieces on the inside. And then to give it a nice finished look we'll add some liquid glue all around the outside edge kind of lining that frame again and we'll layer another frame on top and that'll just make it all nice and finished. So instead of using those seeds as shaker pieces like we talked about earlier what Grace did is she layered them on the outside of this shaker. And at first when I looked at that I thought oh gosh that's really daunting. But then I realized I could create almost like a cool little guide. So I'm going to take the inside of that frame which gives you that kind of smaller shaped strawberry and then we're going to take that seed die. So it has all of the seeds kind of lined up into that strawberry shape and we're going to add that right onto there and run it through the die cut machine. 
then I'm going to be using this as a template. So I'm going to take this piece and pop it right into that frame temporarily, and I'm going to hold it in place with some post-it note tape or any low tack tape like washi tape would do. So we're going to hold that in place just like that, and now this is going to be our guide. So then I went ahead and die cut that same die with the seeds, but just out of some black cardstock. I had the seeds kind of off to the side there, and I'm just going to add a little drop of glue in each little opening and then drop the little seeds in. And that's going to give the seeds perfect placement, but it actually made it really easy to do, almost like a little puzzle. Then once I drop the last seed in, I can remove that template and all those seeds are going to be in perfect placement. But I love the look of this because we're kind of seeing the seeds but also looking through into the shaker bits and I just thought that looked so cool and so special. I just love seeing all those little shaker pieces move around on the inside. So now we're going to bring back all of those die cut pieces that we had been working on earlier and finish layering some of them. So we're going to add the stem to the back of those leaves and then we can add the leaves onto the strawberry. And then we can start working on the rest of the card base. So we're going to take out some of the Gotta Have Gingham rainbow paper and we're going to take that really pretty pink in there because it kind of goes along with our strawberries and just trim that paper down to five and a half by four and a quarter. We're also going to take out a piece of vellum in the same size, and this is to diffuse the pattern. So how cool is that? When you put vellum over pattern paper, it just makes that pattern and color a little more subtle. Then we're going to take one of these reverse scalloped rectangles and die cut it from white cardstock, and all of these pieces are eventually going to be layered together, which is so cute. But first up, I wanted to do some stamping. So here is the How You Bean Strawberry Stamp Set, and we're going to use some of the stamped words in combination with the Scripty Sweet. So it's going to say, have a very sweet birthday, which is so cute. So I'm using all of those die cuts as a guide as to where my stamps need to go, but then I'm going to remove those and stamp those down. Now we can start to layer all of the pieces for the card. So we're going to take that Gotta Have Gingham paper and attach it onto a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. Then we're going to take that really cool reverse scallop piece, we'll add some adhesive to that, and we're going to layer that onto the vellum. Now I'm not going to attach the vellum to the card base yet. The trick with vellum is adhesive kind of shows through it, so you have to hide your adhesive. So I'm going to layer all my strawberries and pieces on top, and then we're going to hide our adhesive behind those strawberries. So we're going to take the little cool shaker strawberry and we're going to add that onto the card there. It's not permanently attached yet, we're kind of using it as a guide as we start to add the smaller strawberries and greenery. So we're going to layer one of the strawberry pieces over it, which is just so cute. And then we're going to start kind of tucking in greenery all around so that it looks like this really cool strawberry patch at the bottom of the card. I'm also going to add in the word sweet. I wanted the word sweet to be kind of over top the greenery, so I put some of the greenery down and then the word sweet above that. Then we're going to add some more of the greenery to the bottom and then we're going to pop up that other strawberry patch strawberry there. Now there's all these really cool flowers in the outside and in stitch strawberry frame set. So we're going to be using some of the flowers here and we're going to layer them. So I'm adding a little drop of glue in the center and then I'm just offsetting the flowers and layering them so they look like they have a ton of petals. Then we're going to add that cute tiny little star there for the inside of the flowers and I think those just look adorable. And we can just add the flowers in and kind of around the greenery and strawberries. And something about those white flowers really brings in the white frame from the outside and I think it looks so pretty. Now remember how we talked about hiding our adhesive? That's what we're going to do now. So we're flipping it on the back and I'm just adding adhesive behind those die cut leaves and strawberries. And then we can attach that on there. And I love the look of the vellum over that pattern paper. It just makes the perfect look for this card. Now next up, we're going to be taking the You Autumn No stamp set and we're going to use some of the mice in this scene. And I love all of our mice because they can be mixed and matched and used in different ways. And I love using what should be autumn mice for a really springy, summery card here with our strawberries. So we're going to add these little mice as if they're kind of playing around in the strawberry patch. And this guy there, the little yay mouse, is so cute. And now the card is all done, and oh my gosh, I just love shaking it and seeing all that fun glitter move around. It's such a cute scene, and I love that you can mix and match the larger strawberries with the smaller strawberries, the greenery, everything goes together, and it makes for the cutest and sweetest card. So thank you so much, Grace, for creating such a gorgeous card. And next up, Shari is going to show us how to make an easel card, and it's super cool. So on my card today, I'm going to be making a big strawberry using the outside in stitch strawberry dies. I'm making this strawberry two-sided, so I've cut out two of the outside pieces out of pink spiffy speckles. That yellow piece will be the inside, which will be the seeds. 
and I've cut the tops out of cilantro and then the flowers out of white and also some flower cardstock. I wanted to make these bright red like strawberries but still keep some of that pink so that's why I'm starting with the pink paper and I'm adding some abandoned coral distress oxide ink. So I'm giving it a nice dark shadow on one side. It's kind of like this strawberry isn't completely ripe. It's not all red all over. I still have some of that pink. And I'm going to do the same to both sides because this is going to be a two-sided strawberry because I am making an easel card today. And the strawberry is going to stick up and you're going to see both sides of it. So once I have this looking the way I want, I'm going to move on to cutting out the seeds. Now you could cut these out before you inked it, but I just decided to do it after the fact. So I've cut the seeds out of both sides. And that yellow is going to sandwich between these two pieces. But before I get to that point, I wanted to ink blend a little bit onto the tops of the strawberries. So I cut these out of cilantro cardstock and I'm adding some Lucky Clover ink just to the tops of them. I'll color both of these exactly the same because again, they're going to sandwich on the strawberry and you're going to see it from both sides. I really like how this dark ink kind of fades to that lighter cilantro. And I'm also going to ink up the stems. Now I did realize I inked it up and they both went the same direction. So I cut a second one and I'm actually inking the back side of this one so that I can flip it and it can be a mirror image on the back of the strawberry. And I always like to add some texture with some splatters. So I'm getting out my white watercolor paint and just adding some little tiny splatters by flicking it off the side of a acrylic block. I'll do the same to the strawberries as well so that or the body of the strawberry as well so that everything matches nicely. And this just helps bring out some of the speckles that I covered up with that abandoned coral ink when I was inking the strawberries. So now that I have that looking the way I want, I'll just let that watercolor dry. And once it's dry, I can start to assemble my strawberries. Now, as I said before, this yellow is the inside and you're going to see it through those seeds. So I'll just use my liquid glue to basically sandwich both of the pink strawberries on each side of the yellow. And I'm making sure that I put the glue on the piece with the openings cut out. I don't want to put it on that solid piece because then I run the risk of putting glue where it's going to peek through one of those holes that are cut. Now I can add the green at the top. I'm only adding glue to the bottom of the greenery because I know that top is going to kind of stick up. And then I'm going to add a stem. So it's kind of nice because this stem is going to be sort of in the void that's created by all those layers of cardstock. Those two stems can layer together. So I'll add the back side of the stem and then I'll add the rest of the green top to the other side of the strawberry. And you can see here I added glue to the piece that was peeking above the strawberry so that these two pieces can be glued together and you have this really fun double sided strawberry. Now for an easel card it's a pretty easy thing to make. I'm just taking my top folding card and then I'm going to do another score line halfway on the front. So since this was five and a half, halfway is two and three quarters. So I'll just score that and enforce the fold with my bone folder and you can see there how this is going to work. So it will stand up just like that once it's finished. I'm using the green paper from the Flower Market uh, collection for my grass and some blue spiffy speckles for my sky. And I've just cut them to fit on half of the front of the card. So that way they're going to connect at the fold 
and I don't have to worry about a second piece over a fold because we all know that kind of makes the fold really thick and sometimes hard to fold. So this one will stop at the fold and then the green will pick up and go towards the bottom. And I had this one a little bit longer, so I'll just trim that off. I'd rather it be too long than too short. So that's why I'm lining it up at the fold. And then if there's any excess at the top or bottom, I can easily trim that off. So I'll just butt the green up to the blue and I have a natural fold between those two because there's a break in the paper and that fold will fold really nicely. Now for the inside, I wanted to create a bumper for this to kind of bump up against when it's in the folded up position. So I took two sheets or two pieces of white cardstock and glued them together and then I added my pattern paper on top. Now this is four and a quarter by about two inches. And that will go on the inside where the second part of my sentiment goes which is where these Henry ABC's die cuts come in. So I cut these from guava and they spell out the word berry. I'm just adding that abandoned coral to the bottom of them so I get a nice two-tone. And then I'm going to add some really fine flecks of black watercolor paint so I kind of get the look of seeds in a strawberry. Now for the rest of my sentiment, I'm going to be using Riley's ABCs to create a custom sentiment. And I'm starting out with the word special. This is going to be stamped on the inside under the word berry. So the great thing about Lawn Fawn alphabet stamps is those stamps are on rectangles and you can easily line up all the letters right beside each other and they're perfectly spaced. So here's the word special. I stamped it out just as a test to make sure it looked good. And I'm putting my letters there just as a placeholder so I know where to stamp the word. I'm just going to stamp it here along the bottom. Then I can go in and glue down my letters and I like to start at the center and work my way out so that I know everything is spaced nicely and centered nicely. So I worked my way to the right and now I'm working my way to the left and then this part will be finished and I can adhere it to the inside of my card. So because of the thickness I added with the cardstock, I'll have a nice bumper with some thickness for the upper part of the card to stop against. I'm just making sure it's lined up with the bottom perfectly and now the inside of my card is done. Now for the outside and the rest of the sentiment, I'm using those same Riley's ABCs. I've got a bigger block this time because I'm spelling out hope your day is. And this will go all the way across the bottom of my card on that sort of green grassy area that I've created. So to kind of cover up the seam between my two papers, Part of it will be covered up with the strawberry, but they'll be a little bit peeking out. So I cut this little fence. This is from the scalloped treat box add-on, the springtime one. And I've just cut that from some white cardstock to give myself a little white picket fence. And I'm just lining up that top horizontal part of the fence with my seam. So a little bit of the fence will stand up when this card stands up. I've also colored some images from the Berry Special stamp set. So I've got that kind of strawberry patch linear image down there at the bottom. I've popped that up on some foam squares so it's in front of my big strawberry and then I can add my big strawberry just tucking it behind making sure that the only glue is on the green part because I don't want it to be stuck to the blue part. And then I can add my other little mice on some foam squares on each side of the strawberry. So you can see you don't want any glue on this area because you want that piece, that part of the strawberry to pop up above the fold. And then I'm adding one of the little flowers. So I cut the flower out of white and then the backer piece out of some yellow spiffy speckles. And I'm just going to add one little flower to the top of my strawberry. And then I cut those little center pieces out of some sunflower cardstock. So I'll add those to the centers as well. 
and I'm repeating it. I'm making two so that I can put one on the back side of my strawberry again so everything matches nicely when the card is standing up. So I'm just putting this little tiny center of the strawberry piece, just layering it over top of the rest of the flower, and then I'll do the same to the back side. So I'm just putting that flower right in the same spot so that they match up from front to back, and I'll add the little center piece. And then finally, I have the little bee from Berry Special. I just thought something else needed to be up here in the sky. So I'm adding the bee and his little trail. They're going to go behind my strawberry. And then here is my finished card with that really fun strawberry on the front. You open it up, you can bump it up against the bumper, and it stands up, and you have this really cute card to display. Oh my goodness, Shari, I love this card so much. It's so cute and sweet. I love the easel style, and this is such a fun way to use a large die cut element like this strawberry. Now, next up, we're going to be creating a reveal wheel strawberry card. I'm going to be using the reveal wheel add on, which is that smaller square shape, and of course, a reveal wheel strawberry window, and then pieces from the original reveal wheel to help me create my whole interactive element. But the first thing we're going to do is drop the strawberry puzzle piece right into that puzzle piece opening. And that's going to create a reveal wheel window that has the strawberry shape. And you can do that with any of our reveal wheel add-ons. We have lots of cute and fun shapes. It's so cool to do. And the strawberry is just so sweet. And we've die cut that from some gotta have gingham paper. And we're going to be using the frame and the little leaves that are included in the reveal wheel strawberry set to kind of layer these on top. And for those leaves, we've die cut those out of two different shades of cardstock, some cilantro and then some green from the new textured cardstock. And we're gonna layer these two pieces on top to give it kind of like a cool little highlight at the bottom. And we're recreating a card by Maureen today. And I thought that was such a cute thing. She did that with all of the grasses and greenery in this card. She layered the two pieces and I thought it was just so cool. So we're going to layer that little strawberry cap right on top of the opening. And next up, we're going to start working with our reveal wheel wheel, which is going to eventually go right behind there, and also the templates. And there's a three window template and a four window template. We're going to use the four window template, and we're going to be stamping some smiley faces in there. So we're going to layer it right on top of the wheel. It lines up perfectly. Hold it in place with some post-it note tape or washi tape is great for this. And then a lot of sets have smiley faces. I really like all the clouds because there's two different sizes of smiley faces so it works for a lot of different things and so we're going to be using the four different smiley faces from this set. Now, to give myself a little bit of a guide to make sure that I didn't stamp the smiley face in too high, for the very first one, I'm just layering that window right over top just to make sure I'm stamping that plate face there in perfect placement. And then now I can just kind of use that as a guide as I stamp each one. You're kind of going to stamp towards the bottom third so that there's lots of room for that greenery over top of the strawberry. So I'm switching between all of the different smiley faces and then turning my wheel and stamping in each of those little openings. And now my smiley faces are going to be in perfect placement so that as you spin the wheel, each smiley face changes. So now we can remove that template and save it to use for another card later. And now we're going to start to actually create the reveal wheel mechanism. So right here we have our smaller circle that goes on the back of the main circle. We're also going to die cut that same square frame but without a window opening out of some white cardstock. We're going to take out some small foam squares and a little brad. Now we're going to take this brad and we're going to put it up through that smaller circle. Then we're going to take that smaller circle and we're going to put it on the back of the reveal wheel wheel and put that brad right up through the center. The die cuts that hole for you. Then we can open up those prongs, securing it all in place. Then we're going to take that whole wheel and we're going to flip it over so that we're looking at that smaller circle. And we're going to put some foam squares on the smaller circle around the brad, but not touching the brad. We'll peel up the liner paper. Then layer that wheel behind the strawberry opening. I'm going to look through the strawberry opening and make sure that that smiley face is in perfect placement. And because we use the template, we know all of the other smiley faces will be in perfect placement then. Then we're going to line it up with that square base piece and press down. And now our wheel is in perfect placement. I'm just testing out my cute little smiley faces. Now I can remove that piece and we're going to add some foam squares all around the wheel but not touching the wheel. 
I always like to add smaller foam squares right around that little thumb notch area just to give it some nice support. And then we're gonna add some foam squares all of the way around. We can peel up that liner paper and then we can attach our frame on top. And now our reveal wheel mechanism has been created. And my favorite part, of course, is then spinning the wheel to see it work. Now this card, just like this, with a cute little sentiment underneath, would be absolutely adorable and a quick and easy card, but I really, really love this idea that Maureen did. So she used the smallest strawberry from the strawberry patch die, and it's a really nice match in size to the reveal wheel strawberry. So we're going to die cut two of those, and also some base pieces from some ballet slippers cardstock, and the strawberries are all from raspberry cardstock, and then the greenery in those two different shades of green. We're also going to die cut some of those cute little flowers that are included and those are really fun too and so we're going to be layering these all these strawberries into a basket and this idea was such a cute way to mix and match lots of different dyes for a really fun card so we're going to layer those strawberry pieces over the pink there and we're going to fill in those little seeds with the pink little background and i think that looks really pretty and then we're going to layer the two different shades of green on the stems again and i love that little kind of pop of highlight that the lighter color green in the background gives Next, we'll layer those little yellow star shapes on the center of the white flowers, and that's sticky note cardstock and white cardstock, and I think those look so cute together. And then we're gonna layer each of those flowers onto the strawberry. I always joke, it's like you're putting little flowers in the strawberry's hair, right? So we're gonna layer those on each of the strawberries, and the strawberries are gonna be in this cute little trio all together at the top. Now, the thing that I really loved that Maureen did was she went into her stash and she saw the Easter basket dies. So the Easter basket die is so cute and so fun for Easter, but it's fun to use it as a basket for other things too. And so we're gonna be using pieces from that die set. So we're gonna die cut the Easter basket base and then this cool little lattice that comes with it. And we'll also die cut this really pretty kind of white scallop. And so we're gonna layer the lattice piece on top to give it a really cute kind of fruit baskety look. And then we're gonna start working with layering the strawberries on the inside. And so at this point, I was kind of just trying to see how everything was gonna look, how everything was gonna work. I was gonna, I'm tucking the strawberry in, kind of seeing how it's all gonna layer. Once I had an idea of that, I decided to start adding some tape runner to the back so that it would help me kind of position everything in the perfect placement. So we'll add some tape runner to the back of the basket. You'll see the basket has a little slit, so I'm tucking the little strawberries into the slits and having them kind of flank the other middle strawberry on either side, but I'm also making sure that the smiley face is still showing so that we still have that cool interactive element. The Easter basket die has all of these cute little grasses. So it has these little tiny grasses, and then also has some larger grass pieces that we're gonna use as well. And so we're gonna tuck all of those little grass pieces into the basket. Once again, taking care there to make sure I'm not covering up those cute little smileys that are gonna be spinning in the reveal wheel. The Easter basket has that larger grass die as well. And we're gonna die cut again from the two shades of green. And we're gonna be layering that at the bottom of the basket, almost like the basket's kind of sitting in a little grassy area, which I think looks really, really adorable. Then the last step will be to take those sweet little flowers again. So we're gonna layer the white and the yellow, and then we're gonna layer those into the grass to kind of echo the three flowers up top. We're gonna add some white gel pen details to all of the greenery. So we're gonna add little lines along the curves of all of those leaves and also along the curves of the little kind of grass pieces. And then we're gonna add some white little dots into the grass and those are gonna look almost like there's other tiny little flowers in the grass. I think it just looks adorable. Now for the base of the card, we're gonna use some flower market paper and I love combining the gingham paper with the flower market. So I went ahead and die cut that with an outside in stitched rectangle. And then we're gonna add some foam tape to the back of our mechanism and we're gonna layer that on to the top of this rectangle. Feel Wheel has this really cute arrow die and so we're gonna layer that right there so that the recipient knows what to do. And that's cut out of some craft cardstock to match the basket. Then we have a standard size piece here at five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're going to layer that at the base of the card, once again in craft, so it's gonna echo the arrow and the basket. It kind of ties all of our colors in together. I love the look of the square reveal wheel layered on top of a standard size card because it gives you this really great place at the bottom for a sentiment. So we're gonna be using some double-sided adhesive sheets to create some letter stickers. So here I'm just trimming down my sheet to be the same size as my strip of cardstock. I'm gonna peel up the liner paper and attach it to the back of my cardstock. And this is effectively making your own cardstock sticker. 
Then I'm going to take out Henry's ABCs and I'm going to spell out the word thanks, but you could use any sentiment here on the bottom because this card could work for a lot of occasions. We're going to run that through the die cut machine and now I'm going to have letters that have the adhesive on the back already, which is much easier than trying to layer glue on the back when I'm trying to do the perfect placement of the letters. So I really like doing this with my letters. It makes it really, really easy to use. So I'm going to start by adhering down the first letter and the last letter, and then I'm going to layer the other ones in between and then peel each one up and line them up to make sure that everything's just going to be in perfect placement. And so now that I have those all lined up, I'm just going to start to peel up the back just like a cool sticker and then stick those right down. And I just love this mix and match of colors and pattern papers and then the letters at the bottom is this great bold sentiment that I just adore how it looks. Then last but not least, we're gonna put this onto a card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. And then this card is all done. And now we have my favorite part and that's spinning the wheel. And just how cute is this? I love how the little smiley faces change and that by adding the strawberries around the reveal wheel window and adding that cute basket, we've really integrated the reveal wheel mechanism into a cute scene. I also think this turns out so cute when you use it more individually. And here's a cute example of that. So in this case, we've added a cute little mouse who's kind of pointing up to that strawberry and the little jar below. It's so cute and so much fun and just a different way to use this reveal wheel. Next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And first up, we have Elise who was so clever because she made strawberry shaped note cards. And how cute and sweet are these? I wanna make ones just like this. It's absolutely adorable and would definitely make someone smile. This shaker by Audrey is so gorgeous. I just love the inking and splattering that she did. Here Megan shows us that this outside in strawberry is a perfect match for the fruit basket. And you can pull that strawberry out and on the back she has that cute sentiment. Yainea created the cutest card. I love that beautiful watercolor background. It's just stunning. And then next up, we have some fun and different ways to use this strawberry. So here, Grace turned the strawberry into an adorable carrot house for her bunny. She also got really clever and turned the strawberry into a pineapple using our lattice dye. How fun and cute is that? And then Tammy turned the strawberry into a rocket ship for her mice. Oh my goodness. I just love these ideas and I love how cool and creative you can be with these strawberry dyes. Next up, we have a reveal wheel card by Grace. And how cute is it that she stacked all those strawberries together and then she has those critters holding them up. It's just so adorable. And I love that she has both smiley faces and sentiments on the inside of her strawberry windows. Callie's bright blue background is perfect for the strawberry. It just really makes it pop. And I just love the ink blending that goes out into kind of nothing at the bottom. Here, Maureen shows us that the magic messages are a perfect fit for these strawberries. The strawberry was actually sized to perfectly fit magic messages, which is a really great way to add a sentiment to your strawberry cards. Next up, we have the shaker card by Grace that inspired us to create ours today. And oh my gosh, how cute is the shaker? I just love it so much. And I love the vellum over the pattern paper. Letitia used the skinny stripe stencil to create a beautiful background for her shaker strawberry. And Elena was also inspired by stripes, but she used our simple stripes dies to create a really pretty pattern. And I love the heart shaped shaker pieces she included in her card. This card by Mindy is so much fun. I love that she used the opening of the outside in stitch strawberry to create a really cool element in her card. And this shaker by Kara is so sweet. And I love that she layered the little strawberry patch stamps in the background too. And then last but not least, this is the gorgeous reveal wheel card by Maureen that inspired us to make ours today. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with these awesome strawberry products. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.